думаю, что на этом уже опыт не отпрашивает футбол, а он очень такой счастливый. Я думаю, что вам стоит быть в них, когда вы поедете домой. So I'm uh, I'm deputy director for the Millennium Challenge Corporation in Moldova, and we have a 262 million dollar grant project um, for Moldova over the next five years. It will end in 2015. <laughs> Um, our organization does um, aims to alleviate poverty by fostering economic growth, and in Moldova, where um, our two foundation projects are the road rehabilitation project from Saraten to Soroka, so we're doing 93 kilometers of road. И наши программы, прежде всего, направлены на борьбу с бедностью. И у нас есть, э, в рамках нашей программы есть программа по реабилитации дорог. Одна из частей этой программы должна завершиться в этом году. Сорока Сарагин. Сорока And the other part is called the transition to high value agriculture. And you probably have seen. What's high value agriculture? Well, if you can imagine, um, expensive peppers in the supermarket in November um, and Moldovan farmers being able to command a good price for, for their um, agricultural produce throughout the entire year. So we're investing in irrigation systems and farmer training and the like. And I'm explaining this because um, I think, uh, I guess my first piece of adv advice to all of you is that you should be story collectors. Um, because how, how do you formulate your goals if you don't know what is out there and, and what is available to you? И один из советов, который я хочу вам дать, это то, что вам следует собирать различные истории. Потому что как вы можете ставить какие-то цели, если вы не знаете, что происходит вокруг вас? И как миссис Мозер сказала, что вы должны проверять свои цели, вы должны быть реактивны к информации и возможностям, которые доступны вам, поэтому вы должны постоянно проверять свои цели и медленные и цели. И как сказала госпожа Мозер, что вам нужно постоянно анализировать, пересматривать свои цели. То есть вы должны их менять в зависимости от той информации, которую вы получаете, в зависимости от внешних условий. То есть постоянно анализировать. And I just want to be clear that uh, I didn't fully understand that when I was your age, and um, it took it took me a while. So I'd like to tell you my story of how I sort of learned that lesson. Я хочу вам сказать, что тогда в вашем возрасте я еще не, не совсем понимала это. Я хочу вам рассказать немножечко об истории своей жизни, как я вот пришла сейчас к своему сегодняшнему пониманию. Uh, so I live I'm from um, northeastern United States, and um, I live right at the edge of where an industrial city meets the village. So I live behind a pig farm, but I'm pretty close to the city. And so, so may, may imagine like I live on the edge of Belt. <laughs> Uh, it was really nice, but there's no marshrukas or anything. So once you're home from school, you're home. I probably did things similar to you. Actually, I would imagine that you were better at helping out your mom and dad than I was. Um, but you know, at home, I, you know, read, studied, played sports. One of the things that I'll, I'll definitely call attention to, which I love about the United States is that we have tons of women's sports programs. I think they're excellent. Um, 
программ для женщин. And, and just so you know, that's a new development that really didn't start blossoming until the 1970s, and that was through legislation um, that basically forced our communities to invest in providing the same uh, sporting opportunities that men were getting. So I started off by playing um, softball, which is a form of baseball, and uh, I'm not a softball player to this day. Um, but I will say that uh, in addition to it giving me an opportunity to um, meet and socialize with other athletes, um, it also gave me an opportunity to safely fail. Uh, and I think that's a really precious opportunity that you guys should try as much as possible. Um, particularly over the next 15 years, because the cost of failure is, is not so great. Failure. <laughs> То есть это тот опыт, когда вы можете почувствовать себя проигравшим, ну как в игровой ситуации. So when I, I mean, oftentimes at schools, when you, when you do just okay on a test, they're not publicly announcing your grades. So the only people who are really knowing what you did are you and your family. Um, and at some points in the year, you could tell who's done a great job. But um, basically, when you do sports, uh, it's pretty clear when you missed the ball and you struck out. And um, I felt a lot of anxiety and, um, you know, before getting up at bat, and of course you're disappointed. But that's that's actually just a part of life. And if you want to be a leader, you're going to have to learn to like put yourself out there, draw attention to what you're trying to accomplish, and be okay when you don't accomplish it. Что касается спорта, то тут наоборот, потому что все видят, например, что вы пропустили мяч, вот, что вы что-то не сделали. И я по этому поводу переживала, то есть я тревожилась с самого утра, но это как бы очень полезный опыт, на самом деле. Uh, so I went to I went to university, and if I was retrospectively, I would say that I did not do the best um, search of colleges. Um, <laughs> I don't think my mom and dad were particularly well positioned to guide me. And um, so I looked at schools that were really expensive that I couldn't afford and um, that were quite good. And then um, another school that was quite large, um, not as good as a really expensive school, but still a good school. Um, and, and so, you know, that I think again goes to back to this um, desire to get as much information as possible and, and stories, not just from your, from your family, but from as many people as possible. So, while you're trying to pursue your goals, you, you go in with the best information you can get. So I went to a good school and then I tried to be the best. Um, I majored in English and political economy and I did not have uh, medium or long-term goals. My short-term goal was just to get A's. I, I did that. I'm good at writing, analyzing, talking. Um, <laughs> I, I, I tended to gravitate towards um, what I was already good at. And um, looking back now, I wish I took more risks. Because one of the amazing things about university is that you have um, so much choice and different opportunities to learn in different ways. And I had the ability to analyze and I, in fact, I didn't do it. 
Но когда я оглядываюсь назад, я думаю, что мне нужно было бы принимать на себя больше рисков и заниматься теми вещами, где я не была в школе семинар. Потому что когда вы находитесь, вы находитесь в университете, у вас очень много возможностей, большой выбор. I'm actually really good at math, but when I was in high school, the way that the, uh, the teachers taught, like some years I would be great at math and some years I would be sort of bad at math. Um, and it's really because I need to learn in, in a certain way. Um, when someone just writes on the, on the blackboard without speaking in complete sentences, I have a hard time understanding that. And in university, when there are several different courses offered, you can look at the different teachers and pick a style um, that that helps you learn. And you can go to a gigantic library that has seven seven different books on the same subject to help you succeed. Я считаю, что у меня есть способности в математике, но у меня были разные оценки в школе, и хорошие, и плохие. И это зависело от преподавателя, от способа преподавания. Например, мне очень сложно понимать предмет вот, математику, когда преподаватель просто пишет ряд цифр на доске без каких-то объяснений. Но когда вы э, в университете учитесь, то там есть очень много курсов, очень много преподавателей. Вы можете узнать различные способы преподавания предметов, да, у различных преподавателей учиться, сравнить. У вас есть библиотека в вашем распоряжении, где огромные библиотеки, где по одному предмету может быть семь разных книг, и тоже есть возможность выбора и сравнения. So I think that again goes back to the idea of um, risk and um, trying new things. And I'll also add that um, when I graduated, I didn't realize um, what, what I would do next. So I graduated from college and I thought, okay, what, what do I do with a literature and political economy degree? Um, and uh, it, took me, it took me about six months to figure it out. Um, but I did figure it out. I want to show you the importance of what you were doing, what you were doing. But when I finished college, I didn't know what to do next. I finished and asked what to do next. I 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 had a job uh, writing for um, business leaders and politicians. Um, I was I was 22. Um, most most of the people were men. They were mostly older. Uh, I was very nervous. I think I look younger than I am. You can imagine what I looked like when I was 22. Uh, and uh, basically, there's a, another uh, point where you know I would go into the bathroom before I would go into a meeting and make myself ready to put myself out there for this um, sort of grown-up position because I felt so nervous about doing the job I needed to do interacting with such older people. Mostly men. Writing speeches and articles. И uh, я нашла себе работу. Эта работа заключалась в том, чтобы писать uh, выступления, речи и статьи uh, для одной организации, где работали в основном мужчины, и они были старше меня, и я чувствовала себя не очень уютно, потому что мне казалось, что я выгляжу в положе своих лет. Мне тогда было всего лишь 22 года, и перед важными встречами я заходила в туалет и пыталась как-то себя ну, вдохновить, чтобы как бы, не, не переживать, не волноваться, потому что эта ситуация была достаточно сложной. And I just think it's important to reveal that to you because we're here talking um, with nice uh, name tags in front of our names, but it's not something that continuously comes naturally to always put yourself out there, um, to, to take risks, to be great at public speaking. This is a, a lifelong process that basically I started when I was about your age. <laughs> с этими табличками, да, все очень красиво, на самом деле это не приходит само собой, то есть это постоянный процесс, когда вы учитесь, когда вы э, учитесь выступать перед публикой, э, и я начала это делать, учиться этому примерно в таком возрасте, как я сейчас находится. And so um, I'm I'm giving you the snapshot of of my life when um, I was your age. He, um, I guess the the very uh, the next chapter was I actually left that position for a part-time job in the field of environment, which basically is what I am I'm in now. Um, and my boss said, you are crazy for leaving this job because this other job pays less 
and is um, only part-time. And uh, I said, you're right, I'm crazy. And uh, that was another, another instance where you just have to look at um, what you want to be doing in five years or ten years and um, think about whether or not it's worth taking those risks. And it, and it really was for me. And so that's how I sort of started my career here. So I 100% agree with Mrs. Moser's advice, and I, I would just ask you, um, in a, any job that you're at, to look at who has jobs you want in five or ten years, or jobs that you don't want in five or ten years, and find out how they got there and what their stories are, and then use that to help inform your uh, short and medium and long term goals. Um. И я полностью поддерживаю совет госпожи Мозер. То есть смотрите на истории людей, которые достигли того, чего вы хотите, вы хотите достичь, и изучайте их долгосрочные, долгосрочные цели для того, чтобы вы понимали, как добиваться своей истории. Okay. Okay.